That gives me a chance to wander back and forth a little as well. Too. Yep. We're al almost, Brian, at that interface where we kind of we're seeing that mm, contour around the top of this feature, which was yep. looking very much like a former Paleo reef shoreline. shoreline. Yeah. Which is interesting that there's all these sort of flat pavement rocks. things showing yeah. up, yeah. Oh, pretty Christ of you here. Push it in there, Daryl, please. Oh, there's a rock pen, too. That's new. I see a little baby uh, stocked crinoid there to the top left as well. Mm. Oh, there's two different chrysogorgias uh, here. We've got a Chrysogorgia day Chrysogorgia and, uh, and a, a baby Ritogorgia here as well. Off frame to the left, Dan, there yeah, was... Yes, I saw it. Okay. Uh, this guy. Yep, that's a rock pen. So that is the... Ex that's kind of the exception um, to the sea pens liking sediment. Mm -hmm. That is a sea pen that has developed a suction cup foot so it can attach to rocks as well. I think that's the first one, certainly this dive. I don't remember seeing one on the other dives either. We know what it is. We don't need a, a particularly good look at it. Right. Okay. Hey, you Deb. Can go yeah. Will you introduce yourself? Me? Who yes. Me? I can't just guest visit. No, yeah, you can. if you come, it would have been okay. But then you started talking on SPL. Well, you asked me a question. So now you got to introduce yourself. And we okay. also want to know what's your favorite mineral. A mineral? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. You know, you have a favorite one. No, actually, I was just at the Natural History Museum in DC a few months ago, <laughs> and so I went through the mineral section on the. We had some meetings down there with the genomics group. And um, they, uh, yeah, there was some pretty stuff, but I can't remember the name of it. But <laughs> I like all things green and pink and blue and I don't know. I'm more of a like colors than the remembering the names of all these crazy. So maybe like an Alexandrite stone? Sure, sure. If that's something that's pink. Yeah, it's, it's like it's green, green, it's pink, it's red. It's all these different colors. It's kind of rare to find out in nature. It used to be a birthstone, and then it got so rare that they had to change the birthstone. Nice. Um, okay, well, I guess back to introducing myself. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Deb Smith. I am sailing on Nautilus this expedition as a mapping coordinator. So I am working with a great team of mapping watchstanders slash all things navigators slash superheroes. And um, we do all the mapping when we're not diving. So we, Nautilus has a multi-beam sonar, EM302. And um, we use the sonar to uh, me send a ping of sound out. That's just Measure the, the time it takes for the Push sound there, to hit Darryl. the seafloor and come back. And then we have a distance traveled calculation. I call it automagical math because these systems do an amazing amount of complex math and processing on the fly and very deep water. So the EM-302 can reach about 8,000 meters, um, but pretty good data till about 4,500 meters. And um, yeah, so we've been mapping the seamount over the last couple of days. Um, we hit a little bit of it on the way down here. So in a little tighter. Previous dive. And um, yeah, so I've done a lot of mapping on various ships over the last 20 years. And I had an opportunity to come out on Nautilus, so I'm happy to be here. So since we've been mapping so many times at night, does that mean that you Are have you good, pretty Brian? much become nocturnal? Um, <laughs> I guess so. I've been kind I'm not of sure what living it. it's a, a black coral, life, but I'm not sure say. <laughs> trying to figure out what it is I'm in the black corals, and I'm not coming down with it. But I've got enough to spend some time right. looking at it. I will point out the baby barnacles in there in the background, too, though. I was wondering what those were. Uh, barnacles are cool. But yeah, this is some type of black coral, and we'll... Uh, figure it out later. Right Sorry, Katie, what was your last question? That's kind of hard to hear you. Uh, <laughs> that darn science is getting in the way of SPL land. No, it's all good. Science uh, is important. 
<laughs> Jane's first. So you hey, Daryl, can you turn Deb down just a little? She's really loud. I know. <laughs> but it's such a beautiful radio voice. You have a nice radio voice. My headphones are... Uh, I can move my microphone away. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. It's probably too close then. That's Everybody seems to be at a very different level. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Because now it, you are not loud in my head. No. You're, qu you're super quiet. Yeah. Which, yeah. Uh, I don't have control of trainer here, do I? Yeah, you can... I don't have a button. It's, kinda, it's funny because I can barely hear Oh, Katie I see. Brian. Sorry, sorry. Oh, yeah, I can you're talk really loud up. for you, Lynette. Okay. Hey, bring, bring your microphone back to where it was, if you could. Yeah, okay. How's this? Testing. I didn't see you. Someone had you turned way up there. Probably. Say it again. Oh, secret backdoor turn up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so it looks like we've got a uh, bubblegum corals. coral here, a couple chrysogorgids, and um, I'm going to play three chrysogorgids. Probably, oh, four. There's an aridogorgia, too, and a sponge. Some type of hexactin and sponge, and then this kind of ubiquitous sea, cu uh, sea cucumber, um, crinoid, we've been seeing a lot today. Not as much today as on previous dives, though. True, but this, this whole area has been heavy on the uh, sea lilies. Any, you want to see closer here? Or yeah, sponge, please. Roger. Okay, Daryl. Uh, let me get a little closer, then you can push it. Are there certain sponges we're looking for, Brian? Is somebody looking for sponges? Yeah, Chris Kelly's got a, a, wish, a wish list of oh, okay. things he could use additional specimens to help describe. But I haven't seen anything on his wish list yet. Hmm. And frankly, we've seen comparatively few sponges. Um, okay, come push in there. So, Deb, you have another Deb listening to you online. <laughs> And they said that they can relate to you because they're always told that they're too loud as well. <laughs> yeah. Right, I think that's all I need. Thanks. Okay. You can go white. It happens. <laughs> um, I think to answer your previous question, you were asking me about our schedule. I, um, I'm very fortunate I don't have to sit a specific watch, but that also means that I'm kind of on call 24-7. So our team of navigators that you hear talking about ship moves and with the pilots and stuff also when they're not in the van sit a multi-beam watch so they are very generous with their time and um, monitor the multi-beam during their same four-hour watches if they're not in an ROV dive um, and so we work together the team of us to process the data and uh, generate maps and do some dive planning with the science team and the expedition leader in the morning um, so um, I sort of rotate my schedule based on when we're diving and when we're mapping and, and when we need to be um, doing all of that. So flexi schedule. And then Deb also works full time at another job. <laughs> oh yeah, and I moonlight. <laughs> uh, I am currently actually working full time for Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute, which I'm sure a lot of you have heard about. Um, they're a cooperative institute um, funded by NOAA Ocean Exploration. And one of our affiliate institutes is Ocean Exploration Trust and the EV Nautilus. So um, along with OET and um, Woods Hole and UNH and USM and URI, um, uh, we create a sure, cooperative yeah. institute of people doing ocean exploration and science. Come up. Come up a little bit there for. Seems like a lot of people on the nav mapping team have like multiple, multiple, multiple jobs. Yeah. yeah, they're always going and doing so many different things. So we've got two different crinoids here and another, um, and a sea pen, another Umbalula sea pen here. Mm. It's always amazing to me how what a small world deep sea science is. There's just not that many ships, not that many. Uh, mapping experts, not that many scientists that we all, and we all don't know each other, but it's definitely a one or two degree of separation kind of thing. Mm -hmm. 
Deb and I spent five weeks together on a different ship two years ago uh, over in the Phoenix Islands, exploring the area around Howland and Baker on the Falcor. Yep, and that wasn't the first time we'd met because we had mutual friends on Okeanos. Yep. So, and yeah, we're all crossed. And I just found out today that uh, Mike, who's our deck boss, has done some contracting work for a company I used to work for for 15 years. So, yeah, it's a small, small world. It is. Here's another big sea pen. This is the second one of these we've seen in the last hour or so. You have all your uh, lights on, do you? So Deb and Brian, how did y'all first get started in the deep sea community? You going first or am I going first? You go first. Um, so I guess the first time in college I started working, I was a marine biology major, um, geology minor, but I actually did most of my research with the geology department. Mm. And uh, <laughs> Leslie Souter um, was a mentor of mine at the College of Charleston, and she took me out on a couple NOAA ships um, as mapping interns. And so I went out for a few days on the NOAA ship Nancy Foster, um, mapping um, paleo shorelines, uh, old um, river channels off the coast of Charleston, South Carolina. And then a year later, I went out for a month on the NOAA ship Ronald Brown with a USGS team looking for um, tsunami hazards off the coast of, in the canyon heads um, off the coast of New England. So I got pretty experienced in and using multi-beam sonar. Um, and then I joined the NOAA Corps, and, which is the NOAA Uniformed Officer Corps. It's the smallest of the eight uniformed services of the federal government, and they operate NOAA's research vessels and aircraft. And so after you do um, some maritime and military training, um, you get assigned to a ship. And I was lucky enough to get my first choice assignment on the Okeanos Explorer, which is NOAA's uh, dedicated ocean exploration platform. Um, and that's when I really, really got into ocean exploration and deep sea science was once I joined the crew of the Okeanos as a deck officer. And so my initial responsibility was I was uh, the third mate or th junior officer on the ship. Um, and so I stood navigation watches uh, and was on the other end of the phone from the control room driving the dynamic positioning system of the ship. And from there I started just lurking in the back of the control room with the ROVs and <laughs> slowly weaseled my way into the nav chair and then weaseled my way into the co-pilot chair and then weaseled my way into the sonar chair and then weaseled my way into the science chair. <laughs> and somewhere in there I got qualified on the video chair as well. Um, and so I spent a few years just spending four to six months a year at sea on the Okeanos and went sitting in whatever chair in the control room they'd let me sit in. That's quite the journey. Deb, what about you? Yeah, so um, a little bit tangential to that. Um, I went to a maritime academy, Maine Maritime Academy, and I have a bachelor's in marine science. And so I kind of, going into college, thought I'd be a marine tech on a ship and um, was one of the original um, first mate interns. So early in the, oh gosh, I'm going to date myself here now. Um, in the early 2000s, uh, Marine Advanced Technology Education Center in California started a internship program for college students to get on UNOL ships. And so I signed up for it and I did a, right. a two-week trip on a Harbor Branch ship called Edwin Link at the time, which is now the Atlantic you are dating yourself. something in Bermuda. <laughs> I know, I'm dating myself. And then I did three months um, as an intern on the Seward Johnson, also a Harbor French ship. Um, but that was mostly ocean um, 
science type stuff. So CTDs and um, recovering big long mooring deployments. And after graduation, I ended up um, starting to work for a survey company. So I got into hydrographic survey and I worked for a company in Rhode Island um, for about 15 years. So I left there as a lead hydrographer. So I was a NOAA contractor doing uh, shallow water mapping for nautical chart updating. And so that was Where's my that foray into mapping and um, did a number Good. of deep water mapping uh, trips through them. Two of them on Falkor and one on the Roger Ravel um, for the United Nations Law of okay. the Sea mapping. And then with having done a few trips on Falkor, I sort of fell in love with the ship and applied to be a full-time member and I was with Falkor and Schmidt Ocean Institute for the last six years. And um, and then decided I should uh, maybe go shoreside and took a job at the University of Rhode Island with Ocean Exploration uh, Cooperative Institute. And so I work with them, um, which is how I got this opportunity. Good, uh, and, um, so I'm very fondly finding myself back at sea for a month. So, uh, but it's been a great expedition and I get to work with uh, some great people here. So yeah. and. Over the years, between SOI and Nautilus and others, we've, I've met a number of deep sea scientists, and I seem to, as I mentioned to Brian yesterday, be fondly friends with a lot of deep sea coral <laughs> specialists. So. Okay, I can go away. What um, is that? Sorry to interrupt, Deb, but what is that thing? Yeah, I'm not sure. It looks like <laughs> a sack, a gelatinous sack of some yeah. sort. I think we thrust or washed it pretty good and it didn't move it so did. i think it's a sponge <laughs> oh, right. um but i that was different i saw uh, a very small one similar to that a number of rocks back but it was very small that was a big thing here's another beautiful aritagorgia with a with a cousin there below it in the, in the genus chrysogorgia Looks like we might have a couple more anthemastis type corals over here. Little ones, uh, though. Pushing on the log toys there. And a little hemicorallium, too. Oh, and mm -hmm. some um, stoloniferins, maybe. Maybe not on the stoloniferins, but definitely some mushroom corals and a hemicorallium. Or deep sea chew toys, as Dan likes to call them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Doug, going back to mapping, I know that the Nautilus is part of a, a, a global initiative to map the seafloor by 2030. Uh, do you think that that's, or what steps are we taking to meet that goal? Yeah, so um, it's a great organization, CPED 2030. It's a, it's a really big endeavor that a lot of people are involved in to try to map where um, I think they just... Uh, we're up to about 25% of the seafloor push in there, Dirk. Mapped. And, um, you know, uh, it's a big endeavor. And so one of the things that we make sure that we do when we're out here is to collect as much additional mapping data as we can. So we compile a lot of different grids from okay, different resources away. that um, show where people have previously mapped and we try to fill in gaps between that Come up a little bit more so please. we're adding to that global coverage there's um, from time to time places we have to remap just so that we have better resolution to be able to safely put the ROV down on it um, some of the maps that we collect and and put into sort of global grids end up with quite a larger resolution than what you want to put an ROV on top of so you'll find that we will remap some things. Um, but we try to do as much new mapping as we possibly can to work towards this global mapping initiative. That was an excellent example or uh, explanation. Thank you. So we're continuing to see these kind of low abundance um, kind of clusters of corals, basically the same um, groups we've been seeing same species, these little paramercyids, two or three different genuses of Chrysogorgia, the occasional primnoid. We kind of moved through a band of um, primnoids, mainly Norella, um, earlier, and we've gotten out of them again. 
So there was one little sweet spot there for um, the prems that we have moved out of as we've climbing up this hill. We've also transitioned from kind of boulder rubbly thing in the bottom to more of this fractured pavement. Um, and definitely picking up more of these rock pens. So looking at the map, it looks like we're starting to go really, uh, we're starting to go ascent, as going higher up in elevation. Do you think that we're going to start seeing organisms change the higher up we go? This, in the grand scheme of things, we're not changing um, elevation or, or depth all that much across this. I think it's a 150 meter change or something. Um, so from a uh, from a transition from one group of corals to another, that's not a big change. Um, we so I think it would probably more current flow um, change on where it is in relation to. Um, how high we are up in the currents or whatnot would probably be governing what we're seeing here more than the absolute depth. Basically, if you can live at 1,000 meters, you can probably live at 1,100 meters. Well, that makes sense. Um, on other dives where we come up from like 3,000 meters to 1,500 meters, absolutely, um, the depth is going to change. Um, uh, the, the communities we're going to see, the species we're going to see is going to be dramatically controlled by depth. But just like yesterday's dive, we're really staying in a the, more or less within 200 meters of the start and finish of this dive and just kind of going up and down um, these features. Sure. I like this one. Somebody online says, the terrain looks like a Greek wedding after all the plates have been smashed. So looking at our dive plan, it looks like we are set to exit the water around 3.30 Hawaiian time, so the time zone that we're on. So then that means that it, we should be exiting right around we, uh, the time we start our watch. I guess that'll be good for processing all the samples then. Because I know as soon as the ROV gets up, y'all guys try to process the samples as quickly as possible, put them in formalin, or sorry, in uh, alcohol. Try to take all the photographs. To filter all the water. Oh, yep, for the eDNA. I'm in there, paste arrow. Another glass sponge. Got a little tether tug there. So. Is that that okay. slime again right there? Yep, that looks very similar to that slime mucus net we saw earlier. Can you go wide, please? Oh, Dan, don't start that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> South here a little bit. So here on the Nautilus, we have four-hour shifts. So we're from four to eight. What's it like being on a vessel that has 12-hour shifts? Awesome. <laughs> Terrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it depends on what you're doing for 12 straight hours. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ROV is on fire. Here's get, right? the fire extinguisher. <laughs> See you in 12. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, is it like 12 to 12, or is it like? Yeah, typically it's yeah. Uh, 12 to 12. Do you get any choice if you get to do daytime or nighttime? Usually seniority drives that. The worst schedule I ever tried to work was, what was it? It was eight, I'm trying to, can't remember exactly what it was. It was, I think it was, yeah, it was eight off Four on, four off, eight, eight four on. on. Yeah. yeah, and it was terrible. 
Yeah. Is that like a DuPont schedule? <laughs> I know that, sorry, uh, the pilot drivers uh, from Corpus are on something called the DuPont schedule, and it's a weird, weird schedule like that. But I caught the, the night side of that, and it was terrible. We actually switched halfway through the cruise because I just couldn't do it anymore. Mm. Wait, this, it's this is our pr the Primnoid, the pr first Primnoid we've seen in a while. Is that a bamboo wisp? Yep, that's probably looks like a bamboo in the kind of in the back and the right, and this is some type of Primnoid here uh, in the foreground. Zoom in there, Daryl. Play with my sonar for a moment. Maybe Deb can help me fix this thing. I can't make it work right. What's wrong with it? It's all. Uh, it's all wonky. It's ADR. Ain't doing right. <laughs> you know what they say. If it's not working, turn it off. Turn it on again. Uh, I thought there was a way to slow it down a bit. Ah, oh, there we go. That's the button I want. So you can see one of the thing, one Somewhere of the kind of right ways in. you can tell these different primnodes apart is whether they have these downward-looking <laughs> polyps. So these polyps are retracted, but they're retracted and tucked down, which is descriptive of um, some primnoid genuses, genera. And this is another one of those astroschema um, brittle stars we see so commonly on um, these and paragorgias and the um, Victor Gorgias and some colleagues of ours at Woods Hole are really doing okay, a Darryl, massive right. project across hundreds of dives trying to document um, the associations between these corals and the animals we see them, whether they be squat lobsters or um, brittle stars uh, and understanding the fidelity. Do certain species always found with other species? Do they? live there their entire life? Do they move around? Do, are they territorial? Does one brittle star chase another brittle star out? Um, and these are all questions we really don't, don't know yet. Hmm. Seem to be picking up a few more sponges here. Yeah, you could come up, up, up by there, I think. What kind of sponges are y'all trying to camp uh, to collect? We've got a, a, so one of the best sponge taxonomists for this part of the world is a guy named Chris Kelly. And he's sent us a, a list of pictures of ones that he's seen but don't have good understanding of the taxonomy. Um, so we're kind of going off of that one. Um, Push in there, Daryl. And I'm looking for things that are really different or unusual or common so or like if we see a bunch of one in an area we will take a sample to confirm because it's um, particularly important for that area to know what it is and if we see something that's very strange and unusual we would take okay. one but what we've seen here so far of just two or three um, it kind of hasn't met either criteria yet for me to want to collect a sample of one yet There's another primnoid, probably an Norella, and another Walteria sponge. Sponges are also harder to sample. They don't come clip as easily as the corals do, and so a lot of times we end up damaging a lot more of the organism, which makes me a little bit more hesitant to take samples of them. Maybe you should be asking someone else this, but uh, how do sponges grow? Do they just, like, especially glass sponges, how do they make glass? I don't know the, the actual biochemistry of it at all. Oh, a pom-pom anemone. That's one we haven't seen yet. We could uh, zoom in on the pom-pom there. I'm guessing you can all have a pretty good idea of why it got its name. No idea. <gasps> How does this one feed? It's got an or it's got a, a mouth in there. 
so it'll it'll pass food from all its different arms into wherever its mouth actually is and ingest it. Nice. So we're right about twelve thousand or twelve thousand okay. twelve hundred eighty six meters here. Um, the water temperature has been holding pretty steady between three point six and three point seven degrees Celsius. Let me uh let me mosey up just a little more and uh, stretch that tether out. Another ten meters maybe. We have a viewer online who says that they are capable of watching 16 hour long ROV shifts. Oh my gosh. And watching three ROV dives at once, uh, saying that Falcor is starting again in June and they'll have the third ROV up. I am not capable of that. Yeah, seriously. Myself either. And as we're moving up, interestingly, the oxygen is trending down um, and not much. We're dropping from 57 micromoles per liter down to 55 and a half. So it's not a big change, but we've seen a, over the last hour, we've seen a, a progressive reduction in oxygen as we've come a little shallower. Is that normal? No. It should be the opposite, correct? Yeah. Uh, there was an, there's an oxygen minimum somewhere between, generally between like 400 and 1,000 meters. So we're probably moving in towards the oxygen minimum. This oxygen minimum for this dive was about, uh, Two hundred. Let me see. Twenty-six. The minimum was like fourteen, I think, somewhere. Oh, interesting. So it was like two hundred or something. Can you tell us a little bit about the oxygen minimum? Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's the minimum amount of oxygen. Yeah. So I mean, you have the different areas of the ocean. So the top are where all of the phytoplankton are, and they're producing um, oxygen. But since they're photosynthetic, that's how they get their energy. But then beneath that uh, zone where light can penetrate, you have the organisms that need oxygen. Um, and they eat, so they use up all the oxygen. So all the ox you have right this there. really high concentration of oxygen in the surface ocean, and then it gets very depleted where all these um, organisms are taking it up. And then as you go into the deep ocean, it kind of Push slowly there, yeah. um, increases down with depth. Okay, get in okay, there without thank blowing you. it out. And actually how the deep ocean gets its oxygen is due to uh, meridional overturning circulation. So there's two places where you can get um, deep water formation, and that's in the Arctic and in the um, Antarctic and those currents uh, will take their oxygen with them all throughout the different uh, ocean basins. Interesting. So Brian, yeah, what is this? Pretty thing? sure this is a Venus flytrap anemone that is retracted, oh, sitting on a dead Chrysogorgia. It looks really weird. <laughs> yeah. It took me, it, it I definitely took me a minute of studying it before I kind of pieced together what I think it is, but I'm pretty sure that it's, pretty sure it's an enemy. I'm almost sure it's an enemy. I imagine it's a Venus flytrap that's just retracted. It got scared and tucked in. Uh, and that's definitely some type of Chrysogorgia um, skeleton. All right, thanks, guys. Okay. Got excited there. When I first saw it, I thought it might be a cephalopod. Ooh. Me too. But I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Last night, we got to see that really cool cephalopod. Don't ask me to repeat what its name was. Mm -hmm. I feel like we haven't really seen sea pens on any other dives, but I feel like on this one we see a lot. Yeah, we've seen definitely more. We've seen like four different families, or for these four different genuses. Um, we've saw a couple on Belula, um, a few before, but yeah, this has been the richest sea pen diversity, um, certainly so far this expedition. How has the flow been on this, Brian, compared to the other side? Oh, that's a damn question. Yeah, I haven't noticed a lot of current here. It was uh, the 
tethers, you know, unless it's uh, going in the direction where it kind of lined up with Argus and uh, Atalanta, but mm. tethers not laying over like it was before. And so yesterday there was more current? Oh, yeah, it was ripping. Mm. Interesting. It was, uh, we had a lot of current when we were down before we started coming up the hill. We were first going across the flats there. Yeah, no sand ripples here. There were sand ripples on the other side. Yep. To the online viewer whose question was, if we could see the public Grafana screen uh, on NautilusLive.org, that one I am not sure about. I'll have to check into that one. Which screen? Uh, on the Nautilus Live org screen, there used to be like a, a hyperlink that you could click and you would pull up all the stats. Mm. Oh, yeah, I think it's uh, all the graphs, the Grafana graphs. Yeah, the Grafana graphs. Yeah, they should still be on there. I did hear that Mike was troubleshooting an issue with it. Oh, there's a oh, fish. Yeah. yeah, there's been a couple of those fun issues. Um, earlier this week with even just giving up the basic info like what's well, Hercules' depth, what's Atalanta's depth. Let's take it, we haven't gotten really many good looks at any of the fish, so let's take a minute and see if this one will hold still for us. Right, I'm going to push in there a bit. Is what? this a cutthroat eel? No, this is, looks like a cusk eel to me. Cusk and eel. another solitary hydroid. Oh yeah. Oh, actually no, that's an anemone. So this is an Ophidia day, Ophidia. They're pretty, fairly common family to see of deep sea fishes. And he wants to be shy. Oh. I have never ever seen any of the. Never seen a predatory event with a deep sea fish. That would be epic. Almost as epic as a Dumbo octopus laying its egg on a piece of coral. <laughs> I have seen in shallower than this, still deep sea, in the a few hundred meters range, I've definitely seen them. And I've seen and I've seen one snap of branket eel carrying a kill, but I didn't see it make the kill. Hmm. And I've actually seen shrimp and brittle stars catch fish before yeah but i've never seen the fish at this depth take um catch something it's not like you know when we're shallow the fish get all crazy with the light and yep. feed and the rv is lights but these guys i don't know I don't, I don't remember exactly the depth, but like six, seven hundred meters i saw a hake nail a shrimp lunch it was pretty exciting hmm. that's awesome Brian, are those old, like, um, cup corals on the rock ahead? So, uh, uh, maybe go a little tighter there, Daryl. It's going to cooperate. I was trying to also figure out what the big white ball of something was on that one. That? That's a Xenophia 4. Oh, okay. What is a Xenophia 4? It is a single-celled organism, and the where it lives in the taxonomic tree is suddenly eluding me, but it's generally considered the largest single set organism on the planet. Wow. All right, I think we got all the fish shots we need. Roger. We have a Xenophia 4 expert uh, coming into the chat over here on the SPL. They've been waiting and watching for the Xenophia 4s. Can we check out Sponge, please? Yeah, where do you see a sponge? Uh, just coming off the screen to the right. Right. There. What do they have to say about Xenophia <laughs> Um. Um. Just pointing them out every time they see one. Ah. <laughs> um. Sure.
Oh, so now, uh, now the Xenophia 4 expert is saying that they can concentrate heavy metals within their body, so it would be an interesting project for the Raman spectrometer. Okay, it could push in there. That we can probably arrange. <laughs> Looks like this has got something living in it. Can't tell what it is, but I can see little little bits of red there in between the um, and around the sponge there. Maybe a little, just little amphipods or something. All right, that's good for me. Thanks. I like okay. the sponge. It's a nice shape. They look like a piece of art every mm -hmm. time I see one. I haven't seen like any amphipods yet, which is unusual. Yeah, can we look at that one, please? Sure. Go ahead, do it. So I think this is an, another species of Chrysogorgia, and we saw it yesterday, but I think this is the first time we've seen this one um, on this dive. All right, that's good enough for me, thanks. Okay, you can go in. <laughs> did we, uh, we made a note in there about the Atalanta thruster, didn't we? All right. Oh. Here, sure. Can throw it over there on the ROV dive. Um, can you uh, do one more uh, official gauge reading there before uh, watch change? And we, you can tell TJ you don't have to worry about it because. Oh, no, disregard no, disregard the uh, the mark on the telestrator. That was an accident. All right. Uh, no, you're good. You're good. You can switch back to your grape on it. Sonar back before Robert comes up. Oh, I know he likes it at 10. Looking in at Atlantic, at Atlanta's view, it looks like there's a sponge ice uh, coral there. Yep, that's what I wanted to see. Just getting into the good stuff. Yep, I think you might be right. Just in time for nap time. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. I would like a little bit of a closer view on this, just to, just to make the see where the nodes are. Right. Pretty sure this is a bamboo, but I just want to see if it's a nodal or internodal brancher. Mm. 
You want to uh, push in there, Daryl? There's a node. All right, it is an internodal brancher, and it is definitely a bamboo. No associates, though. Anybody see any brittle stars or anything? No. There's no. a Venus flytrap in Enemy. There was what? okay. There wasn't one in Enemy then. Well, at the top? Yeah, it was towards the top. It's interesting. There's how the polyps are really not around the base or the lower parts of that arm too. That's a little unusual given that the tissue itself looks very healthy and, and thick. Yep, there's an anemone. All right, I think we're good with this one, thanks. Okay, it can go in. And this coral's very large, but there's not, oh, I guess there's the Eritogorgia mm -hmm. next to it, but for something that large, you would maybe expect some other, some other things around it. All right, we're back row is going to start watch change. Roger. We'll uh, find a place to hang out here because the ship's all stopped. So. Booster seat. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Front row changing out. One, yes, one rock. It is a cantaloupe angular rock. It was it's more we got of a lots of room. More rock of a rounded rock. EDNA and then uh, <laughs> one slurp and snip. Snip and slurp. Snip and slurp. We visited the store. <laughs> Hello.
It's a tall watch signing in. Hello to everybody tuning in on our live. Test one, two. Loud and clear. Greeting science. Does that mean let's go? Great. Waters, are you good for a move too? Perfect. Robert Waters. Roger. <laughs> Bridge now. Good evening. Let's do two zero meters bearing two five zero, please. Thank you. get my chat to work. Oh, is that the science uh, manager computer? My mm -hmm. editions, they were having trouble on the previous shift too. Yeah. All right, anything comes in, you got Yeah, maybe I can. Let's see if we log you in. Yeah, that's a good one. You know what, I'm just gonna do that. Paula Santiago is about to become very smart on the uh, chat. No. <laughs> we rocks. I'm going to get out of here and do one of these. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ship moves slowly starting. Oh. There's a tall, skinny... Bamboo? bamboo. Nice. I'd say bamboo. One in doubt. Bamboo. In doubt. Can we zoom in, Dave? <clears throat> so, science, what are we looking for during this dive? Uh, so, the biologists are interested in a greenish yellow coral that's been kind of one of the dominant ones they've been seeing and the, the geologists are simple people <laughs> it just doesn't it take in. much to make them happy just a rock every we're here looking day. for a rock for rocks <laughs> any old rock will do <laughs> we're looking for uh paramaricea a copo belemnon a c pen an e dna sample i think that's it oh and if you could find us one of those extremely dense, biodiverse, uh, overhanging boulders again, we'll take that. <laughs> yeah, if you could do Roger. that. Okay. Well, the last watch really lined us up nicely. I guess most of their watch was sandy seafloor, but brought us to some nice rocks. And we're just about to head up slope uh, up this formation. Looks like waypoint three is the top of it. So, oh, waypoint three and four. This is a cool little feature. I don't know if people online can see the high pack screen but this is zoom out again big flat topped seamount and then there's this next little platform up from it it's really small compared to the whole seamount but uh it could be like a remnant piece of an atoll it could be some bit of reef that continued growing as the as the island subsided i'm really high pack's on uh, stream three now oh cool so people Thanks at home Dave. can see. Yeah, I'll zoom out a little more so you can see the whole future. Wow. And we've we've filled in some of the mapping in the middle of this thing since we this is not in this 
view yet, but uh, it's pretty flat across the whole top of this thing, and then we're right on this little bump. Zooming in. Here we are, so we're just starting up the slope. Hmm? Did it work your... Oh, I don't know. For everyone tuning in online, we are currently exploring an unnamed geo northwest of Kingman Reef. What is our dive objective? To characterize the biological communities that call this reef home, to investigate the geology of the region, and increase our knowledge about the deep sea. Right. Are we looking for anything, I know you mentioned, are there any more organisms or species that we're looking for? Yep, uh, on this dive we're looking for paramaricea, we're looking for a sea pen, uh, Kofo Belemnon, and I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> um, and we're hoping to take an eDNA sample Ooh. around a highly populated area. Is that how you say it? it's not Edna? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I see it every time. I really had to think about that one. <laughs> I, I didn't get the joke. Yeah, it's not unusual, actually, when I'm talking for people to not, not get it. <laughs> Want to zoom on whatever you got there in the middle? Whoa. Big, Whoa! I didn't circle. know you could make bigger point. circles. <laughs> mean, zoom in, Dave. Ooh, that looks like a chrysogorgid. And and a squat lobster. Is it lobster? Yep. Is that a healthy squat coral, lobster. or has that got a bunch of zoanthids on it? That is a great question. It kind of has zoanthid vibes. Yeah. I don't. I don't think so, actually. Really? It looks no. Like, hmm. Are you looking at the Chrysogorgid or the no, no, the Plexorid. The Plexorid. Um. It has a fly trap anemone on it. Yeah, it does. No, that's healthy coral. That's a healthy coral. For the most part. <laughs> Those are just, yeah. Just yellowy polyps. Yeah. So you can see, like, they've retracted here. Oh, yeah. And that looks normal to me. Um, and the Chrysogorgid, I think, is Chrysogorgia. Got it. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> what's that in the Chrysogorgia? I don't know. Do you think? Kind of looks like a gooey thing. It looks like a gooey thing for sure. Oh no, it's a. Uh, it's, like it's got. It's a lobster. Yeah, yeah, it's got little legs. See it? Oh. An antennae. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Arthropod. Shrimp. That looks like a shrimp to me. Shrimp. Okay. Yeah, with the with the dark belly. Yep. Yeah. Science, do you want to have us just keep moving up yeah, this yeah. slope? Yeah, yeah, we can keep cool. moving. Bridge, Nev. Two zero meters, two five zero, please. So this is interesting. The since we've started going uphill, the water temperature has been going down. Not a whole lot. Really? But noticeably. Do you think there's upwelling happening here? Must be. That looks like an unhealthy Euplectella mm -hmm. and some Farid, Faraday sponges to the left. Can we zoom in, Dave? It's just a 
Nothing to see here. Crinoid. Nothing to see. It's a little sponge, a little Faraday sponge. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Fair. I don't either. I just say it and hope for the best. Okay. <laughs> I know the sponge yeah. part. I'm pre I'm really confident with the word sponge, but the. Yeah, you've got the one down. <laughs> you really nailed it. Ooh, we're getting Ooh. into some oh. density. Yes. Um, at some point, I would love a clip of one of these Plexorid Paramaricia. Which one are those? Um, basically every Plexorid we're seeing. <laughs> okay, so, but in the view right now, which <laughs> okay. one uh, is circle it? I mean, you know, for oh, the Oh, like at which home. one should, uh, okay, all right. Uh, can we, <laughs> can we look to the left a little bit? Can people see you when we, when we do this? No. No, okay. Um, and by this, I mean, um, I'm making a little circles on the screen. We're telestrating, no. yeah. We're, te we're telestrating. Telestrating, yes. Uh, oh, one that. of these. You want to get it now or later? What's better for you? Uh, we're kind we of just, uh, just started a move. We just know? started a move, but let's, let's we can later is fine because I've seen going. we've been seeing plenty of these. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Moves are not precious, so we can always stop. <laughs> but <laughs> wow, that's uncharacteristic. Yeah, seriously. No, I've been saying it from the beginning. Moves are not press precious, but might elicit a sigh. <laughs> Someone's been doing their meditation. Moves are not are not precious professionally. Moves may be precious personally. <laughs> A personal stake in a move. Let the record show. I have one job. Everyone wants to stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's a holothurian. That I don't think we need to look at. Uh, poor guy. A little spun under oh, the what rock. What do you mean, behind poor him? guy? <laughs> what happened? Yeah, because it's because we're fine. ignoring him. <laughs> oh, because we're ignoring it. it we're ignoring it. Oh, his yeah. Chance in the spotlight. Like it doesn't matter. Oh, I think that's a Farad Faraday sponge to the left there. So, there's a headless crinoid, and there's a crinoid head. Oh, do you think there's a story there? The story Faraday. of the headless crinoid. <laughs> yeah. <it's a laughs> On Halloween night. <laughs> wow. Ooh, what is, what is is that a frondless? That's a sad crinoid. I think it's just pointed away from us. I think it's frondy. You think? Yeah. You zoom in, Dave? It's looking a little defronded. What predates on uh, stock crinoids? Snails. Ah, interesting. Anyone nearby? You know why that crinoid got off of Facebook? <laughs> Kept getting unfronded. Oh, oh my no. gosh. <laughs> 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 you know what? <laughs> That was a good one. <laughs> Bridge, Nav. Get us out of here. I'll <laughs> <laughs> add two zero meters to that. 250. Oh, we have a star, sea star there. Oh, a sea star? Where? Uh, on the stock of oh, the crinoid. Oh! Do you think predation is happening? No, no, I think no, it's that's a crinoid. crinoid. Another crinoid? Yeah. Oh, Ooh, a crinoid on a crinoid. That's really cool. What? Oh, no, they're organizing. <laughs> Caught red-handed. Um, for uh, scientific and educational reasons, uh, that's not what happened here. Most likely, what what didn't what didn't happen here? Crinoid murder. Oh, crinoid on crinoid crime. Yeah, is that kosher to say? Uh, Other thing people Only say the to me a lot. Knows. <laughs> <laughs> Only the internet knows. Is that a four-armed Brazingit? <gasps> Too late. It's gone. 
<laughs> Apparently zooms aren't precious either. Uh, Versinga and uh, Faraday and some more. Um, the oh. black swords. Can you zoom on that, um, Dave? Oh, it's okay. I'm not. I'm not a zoomer. <laughs> Already got Not all a the interest in the house, so. <laughs> oh. You have something up on your porch. You just fell off. It's a little sponge. <laughs> Can I just a little sponge? Sorry. <laughs> just a sponge, yeah. And how does it just feel? Just a sponge. How does it feel? <laughs> So these crinoid heads all seem to be pointed up. I presume they get so they blown, do. but uh, what do they? Where do they want to be? I feel like that's where they want to be. I feel like maybe I shouldn't just say things like this, but I feel like <laughs> that's on purpose. Okay. I don't know. Like I. Um, this is where I I don't Brian's really have evidence for, for this. Current measurements would be yeah you know, helpful here. You can look at how they're pointed relative to current flow. Right. There's not oh. much current right now. There's uh, a big sponge. That's no longer a big there. dead sponge. Also, what would be cool would be time lapse photo of one of these spots with all these. That would be really cool. There's another one of your, isn't that one of your plexorids you want Yeah. There? Oh, can we zoom under that rock, please? What do you can think? You crabs, uh, with crabs, crabs with hats? Crabs with hats. Crabs. I'm thinking crabs with hats. <laughs> Some of my favorite things. Oh, I can't see. Can we zoom through the rock? <laughs> yeah, can That's you the laser move the, the rock, on. please? Uh. There's so many of them. The crab party. And the shrimp. Have we seen these anemones without I crabs? I was just yeah. thinking I that same thing. I don't well. think so. I don't think we have. No. Are they farming them? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, what's with these little yellow things also? Are those little baby paramaricia? Are they something else? We're about to end a move here. Are there any yellow <laughs> corals around? that we would like to snip. Yeah. Uh yeah. Great. In How fact. far did we move? I don't think I don't feel like we moved as far as the ship did. Uh we've probably moved about oh hold on. We're in miles for some reason. We probably moved about forty meters, but I don't think the vehicles have we've probably moved about to oh. 30. Oh, oh there we go. Uh, there's just move. a crab. <laughs> Sorry, not just a crab. The crab. Why is this not oh, wow. in the guide? So do we know if they're, if that anemone is stuck on their shell or they're holding it? I think we saw them holding it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they have the little pinchers, modified pinchers. Yeah. That is an interesting uh, little coral or hydroid on this rock. Yeah, that's what I was wondering about. I think they might be like new uh, plexorids forming, mm. or they might be, um, I'll get back to you on that other hypothesis in a second. <laughs> What's here to the right of them? Are those, those look... Little white guys? Yeah. To the right? Oh. Mini legs. What? is that are those amphipods <gasps> oh what? yeah maybe those are crazy looking <coughs> this is the crazy thing you oh. zoom in on any little spot yeah and you see all sorts of stuff ship has stopped uh stolen a friend is what i was thinking nice shot at Ad atalanta 
It might be still an Ephra, but I don't know because the one on uh, the left, for this left, is like taller. Yeah. It looks like Stocked. these are just on the rock and the other ones are potentially growing on some other skeleton. Yeah. Um, I don't think these are Stolonifera. I think they're little baby plexorids. Okay. Okay. Cool. Carry on. Let's zoom on out. Thank you. So is this <coughs> a yellow coral that we're interested in? Um. Can I look at it closer, please? I believe so. Zoom in, Dave. I'm afraid of sampling the wrong coral here. I think this. I think it's safe to say it's paramaris, yeah. Yeah. Is this an okay to set place to set down? It's great. 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 Super. Okay. Super. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Fine. Then. Great. You're taking a snip. Snip and slurp. Is that the plan? I worry about this one getting hung up in the hose. And we have like nearly every bio box open, so okay. But I want you to toss it in the air and drive under it. <laughs> <laughs> is the chat working on this computer yet? Oh, it is. OK. Uh, I don't think Steve is still with us. Oh, yeah. RIP. RIP, Steve, for the night. Who's, that's Dwight logged in. I don't know why on this one I cannot log in to the chat. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> that's not true, actually. Someone else made that up. I have no idea what angular cantaloupe is. Care to explain? The uh, it, that was what was described to me as the kinds of rocks that they thought they were looking for. So, but it's right. It's like medium-sized rock, angular. Mm. Coralie didn't know I would be seeing the chat, apparently. Hmm? Coralie didn't realize I'd be reading the chat. <laughs> <laughs> what did Cor Coralie didn't say that? Oh, she did say that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Coralie. Didn't mean to put you on blast. Do we have the 10 centimeter lasers on to measure? I think we're zoomed in too much. Yeah. We oh, okay. Got it. Or Get any there? I uh, think so. Yeah. Uh, yep, yeah, it's in there. Not very much. Tiny bit. 
Well, we can dump it and go for another grab. Yeah, I think that's probably going to be required. Is it going starboard or front? Chris? I, I mean... If it's small, maybe on one of yeah, the... Yeah, starboard has smaller boxes, but that's... Uh, yeah. That's... You want to do in the front? <laughs> go ahead, do in the front. I mean, that's preferred at all times for this kind of thing, but... Yeah, sure, go for the front. Both are open. Okay. Roll that out. Roll it out. Jules, might, I, might, this, might this be the crap that we were looking? Uh, oh. I'd say so, yeah. Para Paguridae. And it even has an anemone on it in the picture. Can you send me the name somehow so I can... Can yeah. you send it in the chat? Maybe I can paste the image in the chat. Cool. They're pretty tiny Ooh. pieces. It works. Oh, yeah. Go Trey in again? Or yeah. <coughs> Yeah. <coughs> so another grab? Another grab. More zoomage. Nice. Box out. Yep. I wonder if that crab nemone <laughs> is not for protection, but to have, if there's a predation event, to have something to let go of, like a tail on a lizard kind of thing. Huh. We have viewers tuning in saying those are homolid carrier crabs. They carry the anemones to discourage predators. But they can ditch them if they need. Mm. That's what our viewers are saying. Not very good friends. Uh, is that enough of that? Yeah, I think so. What was the name that you came up with, Paula? It is... I don't think it's sent in the chat. No, I realized that it's Parapa... <laughs> okay, you can look at my screen and try to... Parapagurde? yeah. Parapagurus. P-A-R-A... P-A... G-U-R-I-D-A-E. Thank you. <coughs> What was this? <laughs> what was the genus? Para. Oh, there's a fish. Pargaris. P A R A. I found it. Me yeah. zoom in again, Dave. <laughs> Ooh, fish. Ooh. Ooh, what kind of fish is this? Cuskeel? Is it? You like fish? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's a carrier crab. I think it's a type of 
type of it's a type of marine hermit crab that instead of um, instead of having shells, they carry anemones or zoanthids. The para day. We have a viewer who posted a link and say this is a Nautilus video link from last year calling it a homolid carrier crab. <laughs> oh my god. The viewers go hard. Okay. <laughs> the link and all. The shadow is so interesting. <laughs> Great. What was the name they gave? Science, it? anything we want to do here uh, <laughs> otherwise? Nope. I think Sample we're good zooms. To carry on. Carry on. Bridge, Nav. <coughs> Let's do a two zero meter stop bearing two five zero, please. There's a rock pen. And there it goes. Which type of sea pen are we looking for? Uh, Copobolemnon. What's Copo. it look like? It looks is, like. Is it on anyone's screen? Uh, hold on a sec. I'll have it up in a second. It's on mine now. Oh, okay. Yeah. So whitish gray with brown polyps. Yeah, here, let me pull up another picture. Oh, very distinctive, okay. Yeah. What are the, um, what's the black interior? Is that digestive yeah. material? Okay. Thanks. Yeah, so I think they're gonna be. It might be kind of hard to to find them. Not not hard, but they're they're pretty low to the ground. Challenge accepted. <laughs> it's a pretty massive crinoid. Yeah. Wow. interesting cluster. Yeah. Is that Norella? So, Norella, Plexord, and what's the more orangey one? I think a different uh, genus of Plexord. Or maybe same genus, I different mean, species. Zoom in, Dave. Or maybe even I wonder why they all decided to settle right there. Hmm. Yeah, what's so good about that spot? Flow. Flow. Yeah, I think those are both plexorids.
carrying on. Okay, thank you. Is that a fly trap and I'm gonna on a coral? Yeah. On a, on a uh, plexorian? Is that? Yeah, it looks like it. Oh. Should, can we zoom? Um, modifying my primnoid ID, it, I think it's uh, Calyptrophora. Hmm. Yeah, settling on that. I mean, zoom in, Dave. Ooh. It's an interesting scene. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it's, I feel like it's definitely eating coral. That branch is like clean. <laughs> What's that thing? That's a crinoid. Wow. Those hydroids. I think hydroids are so interesting. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh we almost saw a shrimp getting caught. Oh, that would have been kind of cool. Oh, yeah. In a sad way. Huh. Huh. Bridge, no? Carrying on. We can add two zero meters to uh, two five zero, please. So that crazy gorge at that? Yep. I forgot the genus name of that one. We see another. What's oh, that? can we look at that sea star, please? Thanks. Um. There's also a fish hiding on a rock to the left of it. Oh. That looks like something we have not, either we haven't seen before or it's. Okay, let's look. A behavior we haven't seen before. Yeah. It looks like there's plenty of you know, loose here? rocks also. Is that what you're talking? Yeah. Unless <laughs> that... Zoom in, Dave. Is that a fish or is that a... Is it yeah. A, is it a fish? Oh, it's a... Holothurian? Yeah, it's a holothurian. <laughs> 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 ah. Fish, fish tricks. Good eye, though. Fish <laughs> pretending to be a holothurian. That was great. It got its 15 seconds of fame. Very <laughs> pretending to be a fish. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, pretty for excited for that. Our star was dead for a second there. Oh. Uh, Chrysogorgia ID. It's Chrysogorgia uh, geniculata. Hmm. Got it. Thank you. Yep. Um. What do we think this is? Asteroid eye. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> 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 Probably that. <coughs> what else? Ugh, oh, these drop downs are so annoying. Why? Yeah, there's like no current at all. No. Wow. Yeah. Not really sure on ID here. Well, it kind of looked like that one. No. Oh, that like one. Like this one? Yeah. Yeah, it kind of does. They kind of all look like that a little yeah. bit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm no sea star expert. Well, we got a good image, so. Yeah. Someone can ID it. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll keep looking. When you zoom out off to the right, there's this cool looking ledge. I don't know that we'll be able to get over there, but um, if we see something like that, I'd like to check one of those out. Thing over here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like out in this area. We're about to finish a move, but I think I will wait before putting another one in. That's probably a good you idea. Look under this. Is yeah, I just want to look at the face that is uh, exposed there. Are we looking at rocks? Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if there happens to be biology, you feel free to look at it. <laughs> What are you thinking? Interesting know, formation what are the rocks here. Telling you? Yeah, I, I mean it's unusual. We haven't seen it. Anytime you see like exposure, you know, you want to get a look and see if it mm. shows you some structure, internal structure that's useful. So, did you want to zoom on it, or what do you want to do with it? Uh, yeah. When we, yeah. Can you zoom in, Dave? Not too much of a zoom. That's probably good. I can't make too much of it with all the crust. I think that that sea star looked like a goniasterid. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yep. All right. I'm cool here. There's a little fish. Yeah. There's something. Oh. Oh. That's interesting. That's because it's a baby or a small one. A baby or a small one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm happy. I'm just coming short the leash there. Okay. Moving up. Moving up, Rider. Let you get out ahead before I put in another move. Ooh, and I didn't even out there again. Ooh. Oh, wow. What's that? That is dead sponge. Very large. Dead, or dead coral. coral, I think. Zoom in, Dave. Wow. Oh, that looks spongy to me. Mm -hmm. You think? Yeah. Yeah, spongy. Hmm. Spongiferous? Is that a word? <laughs> no. It is now. <laughs> <laughs> Can we look at the brownish coral? I think it has no Coral's growing on the sponge, too. Oh, uh, yeah. The one off to the left? This uh, one? To the left, yeah. Yep. That one. More coral oh. Dun dun dun. I gotta get going here soon. Okay. Okay, I got an ID. We can we can go. That's Calyptrophora. Okay. The ship stopped. We're just getting swing on Atlanta. I assume that's what you're referring to. Me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, me? Jules, 
can you repeat the ID real quick? Uh, Calyptrophora, C-A-L-Y-P-T-R-O-P-H-O-R-A. Thank you. God, this oh, wait, temperature is, is so weird. Why is the temperature going down as we get shallower? Hmm. Oh, it's very interesting. Hmm. That is a great question. More for Olivery there. Yep. Ooh, good healthy sponge. Ooh. Euplectelid. Zoom in, Dave. Before you start the next so ship cool. move, I'd love to pick up a rock in this area. Great. We're not going anywhere. What sold you on this area? Uh, you know, we're getting towards the top of this thing, and I'm slightly worried we won't see as much loose material mm. to be able to grab. So this might be the best opportunity to get something from the top of it. Pick a rock, any rock? Yep. And what are you hoping this rock will help you understand? Well, I'd like to, well, so a first order question would be, is this carbonate material or volcanic oh. material? And that would tell us kind of what this lump is you know to as far as one rock can tell you and then if it's volcanic one thing i've been noticing is that there's a huge variety in how vesicular or bubbly these rocks are and rocks that are erupted in the deep ocean tend to not be as bubbly as ones erupted at shower depths or on land so i'm kind of wondering since we're up high if if it's volcanic, will it be particularly bubbly? And can we use that to reconstruct kind of the paleobarometry of this, this seamount? So this looks like a lot of looseness here. So you got one in mind? Um, let's see. So there's the lasers. So I think that one looks pretty good. Uh, or the one you're touching right now, that's even easier uh, it's actually not easier but oh, okay. <laughs> it's too close <laughs> okay <laughs> that's an awkward grab in there that's an armpit grab <laughs> <laughs> which no one is a fan of really <laughs> no <laughs> we zoom in Dave Is that a good size? That looks good to me. Are we going forward or starboard? Starboard. Let's keep those forward ones open for goodies. Starboard. Will I change over the sample? Thank you. Got the pictures. Okay. Zoom out. Swap over to sample, yeah? Yeah. So we have another rock on box F, but aside from that, everything else is clear. I'll put it in the back. Yeah, in board. Okay. 
Okay. Coming in. Raj. Switching back to dive. Great. <laughs> you caught me staring off into the distance of high pack. Okay, I got the uh, thumbs up from uh, ROV, so science is good to go? Yeah, thumbs are up back here as Perfect. well. Perfect. Bridge, Nav. There's another one of those monster crinoids. Two zero meters, two five zero, please. Oh, there's another star. You think it's the same species? No, the other one oh, was white. Right. I think. This one is pink. Let's see. Got another star. Yeah, more zoomage. Oh. Yeah. No. Sorry, I was off headset, so oh. I'll zoom in on that little <laughs> that little guy there. Yeah. I gotta line up differently for button into the coral here. And we're making dust. So do crinoids have a nervous system? I... I guess I'm just kind of wondering, do they feel it when their arms wave around? I don't know the answer to that. Let me look it up. Chrysogorgia. Or crinoid. Okay. <coughs> they do have a nervous system. Ooh. Well, that's. It's a pink. God, that doesn't even that's look. This looks like what someone would. Fun make right if they're they like i need to make a sea star right but, and that's also a cookie <laughs> huh that's freaking cool that's pretty neat now i just want cookies uh. <laughs> got him got him got it it, it, you know. <laughs> Got him. Jules, something along these lines or maybe all oh. different? Yeah, that looks good. Good to me. Possible lighting. Whoa, yeah. there's a coral. There's a boulder. Huge oh. coral. Oh, massive coral. Oh, couple corals. Still. Oh. oh, wow. I'm still impressed. 
As requested, science. This is the Thank boulder. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for getting us here. <laughs> boulder of opportunity. So we could do, if we could like kind of pirouette around this a couple times, like, uh, you know, back and forth. No, seriously, for like uh, 3D model construction. Uh, sort of on a slope though, so. We don't have to be uh, set down anywhere, just kind of like. From a, from a height? Yeah, exactly. We're, in, we're just finishing a ship move. Three meters left on it. I think we can go sort of quickly around here, I think. Okay. Right? Sure. Doesn't that work? That I works. I think it does. Yeah. No, it's absolutely it works. There's like, you know, 30 frames per second. You just need yeah. one from different positions. Can you, uh, Paula, note in the log that we're pirouetting around or just write 3D model or something like that? Do you want a location target for this as well? Oh, sure. Is there someone interested in doing uh, photogrammetry? Yeah, uh, Jonathan Feely, who, oh, cool. what's his position at OET? Jonathan is OET's media production specialist. He's cool. the MPS, as we say. The MPS. <laughs> uh, I guess we can just mark this as a MPS one. Well, I was going to say uh, I'll do a dive number, maybe, and then. Uh, and Bob, we don't have to go full circle. You can kind of like swing back the other way if you want. Yeah. Okay. But getting a slightly different. Oh, you're doing the full 360. I love Just it. Doing what I could do. Okay. <laughs> 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 it's interesting that this. Uh, coral is so dominant on this dive. That is a very tall whip behind it. Oh, yeah. look at that. Yeah. Yeah, so we have to go around the other way just because of the slope. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Right. Yeah, Science, do you have any way of, any particular way you want this, uh, this target labeled? Um, labeled by cruise, by dive. What's the typical? I, d I don't know. Um, but for a sample, what do you do? Just oh, we would normally do NA149 dash and then the number. Not the so dive, though. Correct. But this might be helpful to have the dive. So let's do NA149 H1951 okay. or 2 or whatever we're on. And Wait, then we can say A, B, C, D instead of 1, 2, 3. I don't even think we can just have a, like a word like photogrammetry yeah but uh do you think you're going to do this more mm, yes but not on this dive uh, How about photogram zero one okay okay boulder and boulder with coral this is gonna be really cool yeah that's gonna be really awesome can't wait to see it I don't know if you see the image there in the Atlanticam. I don't know if... Wow, what's that? I don't know. It's just uh, up. Yeah, I noticed that. What? Wow. Jules, do we have a positive or a possible ID for the corals on the boulder? Uh, yeah, I would say they're a paramaricia. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And there's a Farad, Faraday sponge uh, under it, too. Zoom out there. TJ's freelancing over here. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we got to give him a cinematographer credit on this. A couple more, he'll Just get his union card. <laughs> <laughs> Just up the hill there from you. Can't really see from here. I 
Okay, Adam, I shortened the uh, target name. Did we get it? I think yeah, we, got, we it. got it. Thank you, Robert. That was fantastic. What did you make it? So now it's a? photo underscore NA149 underscore H1953 underscore and then the number. Okay. We'll see if that works. I don't know if we actually need to include the diver number. Because if we want to do it for the whole cruise, we could just do cruise number. I guess I thought the dive number might help him find the. I guess they actually need to go the other way here. Well, that information just come up with that target in general, the way that a sample would. Possibly, I don't. I I haven't interrogated individual targets before. I'll discuss it with the great Oz. The great Oz. <laughs> uh, Samantha, can you repeat real quick the ID you gave to the boulder? Yeah. Um, do you can you see Hypac on your screen? Yep. Okay. Let me find it again. Okay. I've got it highlighted on my oh, screen. Perfect. One, Are we going up to that? Big sponge thing, Nine. sponge in the sky. Um, Got it. Thank you, Samantha. Yep. Yeah, I think it it might have been some coral. But yeah, let's check it out. Come on up. Okay, the temperature is coming back up again. Noted. Oh, wow. I think that's, a, that's coral. Nice. Golly, that's big. Wow. Can we get a close up here? I don't need it. It's, that's amazing. What? That's incredible. I wonder how old it is. I wonder if anyone's dating these. I think that live corals are hard to date. Really? Yeah, that, uh, like, the skeleton down below, mm -hmm. you could get, like, yeah. when it died. I guess we went overall okay. here first. Right? But uh, I think it's hard. I, you know, if, no, They're I feel also like not I've had very this discussion thick before. They don't have any, like, skeletons. you know, growth rings or things that you would normally use, you know. The Adelanta view really gives you a. They don't have growth rings? Is. No. People this particular coral? Uh, corals in general, right? Corals, I, I think. Oh, like have a shallow rings. corals, right? But these uh, zoom in yeah. on it there, Dave. Deep water corals don't have growth rates. No, I, I've I've had this conversation before oh. with people, and like I, you would think the base maybe would because that's right. the part that's been growing okay. the longest. Huh. Interesting. It has white patches. I didn't know about that. It? Yeah, it looks like some dead patches. Uh, that is like. I don't really know what this Dying? is. <laughs> Very effective flow catcher here. Yeah. Like Incredible every little flow catcher. In, every little space is filled with a, a polyp. Wow. Oh, what are these? Uh, Although are really these, like, small polyps. Knuckles or something? Or is that a. I think that's creature? a mollusk. Ah. I think there may be mollusks. Wow. Another crab. What are these guys there? Squat lobster. Oh my gosh, there's so many squat lobsters. I think they're on oh the other yeah, side though. Wow. So you can barely oh, see you're it. seeing their legs through? Yeah. 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 Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, oh, nice with the shrimp there. Hold on, let's hold while <laughs> we get that shrimp. That's cool. I'm not convinced that it's bamboo. Okay. But I've been Did wrong I suggest about that it was bamboo? No. Okay. This good. is my <laughs> own brain. Okay. This is the debate I happening feel like internally. That would be pretty presumptuous of me. <laughs> Look at that. That's no, your so coral cool. idea is pretty good. Oh my god. Wow, 
this thing is massive. I wonder how much of it is living. I don't know, cause. I oh, look there. Wow. Is that bamboo? -y? Uh, mm, I don't think that's what that is. Okay. I see what you mean about how much of it is living. You yeah. Don't see a lot of polyps out. I don't see any polyps unless they're all retracted. I don't I, think that's the case though. Then the star. Interesting. It could be completely dead. There's so much life on it, it's hard to tell. Yeah. So that's, it's probably, the coral doesn't necessarily need to be alive to be an effective host for these. No, no. That's very interesting. Corals provide structure for all sorts of other living organisms. Um, some would require the coral to be living, but it provides like habitat for squat lobsters, shrimp, brittle stars, anemones. Do we want to get in really close to try and see? If we could get really close, that would be awesome. Well, we have a, a possible ID from online giant madrepora coral. Madrepora. Okay. 